As Christians, there are areas in and around Rome that we may have a higher appreciation for than the average tourist. Those are the sites we are focusing on today. Most people know about the Holy See, but did you know about the actual official seat of the Pope? Because it's not inside Vatican City. Have you heard about the Latin translation that caused Michelangelo to sculpt Moses with horns? In our last video, we explored some of the most famous and busy sites of Rome. Today, we investigate some of the sites in and around Rome with the highest Christian significance. This is Witty Travels, and we thank God for our time in Rome, Italy. Travel is such a blessing. We can't help but thank our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for this life He has given us. Our first stop was at Basilica di San Giovanni Laterano. This is the second largest and oldest church building in Rome. It is also the official seat of the Bishop of Rome, the Pope. Entry is free. It was built by Emperor Constantine. It was he who, with the Edict of Milan, allowed freedom of religion in the Roman Empire in 313. There is a box hanging high above the altar that apparently holds parts of the skulls of St. Peter and St. Paul. This church contains six papal tombs. The statues and carvings are majestic. Walking in front of these gigantic doors would make any human look extra small. These doors once were an ancient Rome Senate house. Across the street is the Pontifical Sanctuary of the Holy Stairs. These stairs are an important stop on Rome's pilgrimage trail. Many believe that these stairs are from the palace of Pontius Pilate. Helena, Emperor Constantine's mother, brought these stairs to Rome. It is believed that Jesus climbed these stairs on the day he was condemned, so pilgrims climb these stairs on their knees in honor of him. We just saw an incredible statue from Michelangelo inside of this church and we just barely made it. Thank God when I was looking at my Google Maps, it said that it closed at 1230. So we knew that we had a boogie. Inside of this church, all the way to the altar and then to the right, you see this beautiful marble statue of Moses. And it's not just any Moses, it's Moses with horns. So according to our research, Moses has horns and to the right side, two tablets of holding the Ten Commandments because the Latin translation said that Moses had, I think, cornuta, which is Latin for horns. Today, we accept that the translation more means like his, his face was shining or emitting rays of light because he's in the presence of God. But the Latin translation said that he had horns. So when Michelangelo was doing his marble sculpture of Moses after seeing and being in the presence of God, he had horns on it. And it's not just here, because when you look at other paintings of Moses around Rome, you'll see him also with the horn. So it's a pretty unique, interesting way to kind of experience and visualize the Bible here in Rome.
we are officially in country number 27 for us the vatican city and it was so great like this okay this definitely was the easiest border crossing because there's no passport controls no one checks your passport at all there's no security check once you're in Rome, you just walk right in. One minute you're, you know, getting off the bus or the train, and the next minute you're in this incredible location. Now it's about 8.30 in the morning, and as you can see behind me, there is quite a queue. I think the Vatican, I mean, check it for before you go, but I think the Vatican, or at least St. Peter's Basilica, opens at like 7.30 in the morning or something like that. And I think the Metro start running at 5.30. So if we were really ambitious this morning, we could have made it here when it was opening, but it looks like the queue is actually moving at a decent speed. We have tickets at 11 o'clock for the Vatican Museum with the highlight of that being the Sistine Chapel. So we have plenty of time, even if we just went, wind up with like 15 to 20 minutes. Church bells in the Vatican. Even if we have 15 or 20 minutes in there, if we could see La Madonna Pieta and then we could see like the ceiling and just walk around a little bit, that'd be awesome. Behind me is the uh, obelisk that uh, was present when Peter was crucified. So much history. Oh yeah, this is where the, the Pope preaches. Very much looking forward to today. That archway right there in the middle of the screen right now is the gateway to the Vatican City. So it's pretty easy. And then here is the queue right now, 8.30 in the morning. And then, you know, that's the entrance. So it's moving. I think Kati was like way back here when I started uh, rambling. And now she's already in the metal queue. So that's great. Let's get some B-roll and let's get inside. Ladies and gentlemen, there's St. Peter's Basilica. Yeah, you really can't see the dome from this perspective. So after we exit, we'll have to get some good footage of the dome from a little bit of a distance away. Yeah, even with the queue being a little bit long, it was like less than 10 minutes for us to get in, pass security, everything like that. So now we're gonna go into the proper St. Peter's Basilica. The Vatican City, or Holy See, is the smallest country in the world, but inside of it, St. Peter's Basilica is anything but miniature. On the 18th of April in 1506, Pope Julius II laid the first stone on the new St. Peter's Basilica. The Pope descended into the pit of the foundation down a ladder, dressed in pontifical robes. This colossal altar was built by famous Italian artist Bernini. His work is all throughout the region, but this piece remains one of his most famous. This altar was built over the tomb of St. Peter. My favorite piece inside St. Peter's Basilica is Michelangelo's Pietà. It is the only artwork bearing the artist's name. This sculpture is so famous that it was loaned to the World's Fair in New York City in 1964. Then the statue was enclosed in bulletproof glass and had an electric walkway to keep viewers moving along. Even inside of St. Peter's Basilica today, you can't get too close to this work of art. We just came out of the church. It's only 9.30. Look this is the very end? It's just wrapping around? Yeah. I thought they were trying to get a good view of the dome. No. 
literally all the way out here. We were about here at 8.30. It goes fast, but wow. There's two lines out here. One is against this wall, and it goes way down to the end, and then wraps around some. And it, there's a second line. This should be uh, for people who already have a reservation. So we have our vouchers. We'll explain the whole process in a minute, but I think this is where we go to turn our vouchers into actual coupons. And that line went by super fast. So hopefully that is the case. Can you like twice ask me my friend? Like, no, just answer my question, please. <laughs> so this should be the queue? Yeah, but to I think we're early, but we can ask one of these guys, yeah. We're at 1024. Ticket's not till 11 o'clock, but let's see if we can get it early. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's answering the questions, but they're letting us through. So we're supposed to get like, when you get the ticket, it tells you this is not your ticket. This is a voucher. You need to go get your ticket. So I keep asking, is this where I can go get my ticket? Nobody's answering me. But he scanned it and it works, so. Well, yeah, I mean, like, well, what if I didn't want you to scan my ticket? I, I had a question. He just started scanning the ticket. So let's see. Hopefully there's air conditioning inside and at least we can sit down in the air for 35 minutes. Over here is guided tours. It just says the word guided, but trust me, it says tours over there. So once it's time to check in, that's where we're gonna wanna go. But for now, we have a backpack that's way too big. It's not way too big, but it's too big. So we're gonna go to luggage storage and drop it off. And this is a free service. So let's go drop that off and see where our tour guide is. So you can't bring food into the museum exhibitions, but uh, once you're past security, there's still an area. We're actually sitting down right now in the air conditioning, and we're gonna enjoy the rest of our breakfast leftovers and uh, then go by now. Everybody wants to go to Rome, and I think that you should 100% do that. But don't think that this is the easiest experience, and if this is your first time traveling, definitely do your homework. Don't just assume because it's one of the most popular cities in the entire world is gonna be easy. I'll tell you just about the Vatican for now. So for the Vatican, you need to wait 60 days out, and I think it's around like midnight, is it midnight Vatican time? Yeah. Around midnight Vatican time, which if you're in the States, is easy. If you're traveling around the world like us, we had to wake up at like, I think one o'clock in the morning or something like that, or stay up past one to try to get our ticket. Now the key is most people are gonna try to sell you a third party guide, which is what you do not want to do. You want to get up six days prior to where you're gonna go and get your ticket. Now I don't think you can get it any earlier and you might be all right to get it a little bit later, but try to get it 60 days in advance. Now we didn't want a tour, a guided tour of the Vatican Museum, but I mean, the website is not so bad. It's like it crashes a lot. And the only thing we're able to get for the day that we wanted to go here is a guided tour at admission. It's okay, it's still a good value. You get the guided tour, you walk around with headphones, which is nice. So it's not like we're not gonna be able to hear the guide, even though it's gonna be crazy and busy. The reason we suggest going with the guided tours from the actual museum is because we've heard the horror stories of people going through third parties. Because what happens is some of these third parties don't even have the tickets themselves. They're just uh, booking you and hoping that they can get the tickets for that day. So some people a few days out, day before, heard back from their third party and say, sorry, we don't have tickets for your day. So that's unfortunate. But I did have a friend who had a rough experience. He was able to enter the Vatican, but because he had a third party tour, it pretty much ends once you're done with the Vatican. They kind of say the Sistine Chapel's over there, but they don't, most of them don't walk you through the Sistine Chapel. And so this tour guide was very nonchalant and was like, okay, Sistine Chapel over there. And my friend, like the exit line and the Sistine Chapel line were right next to each other. And he wandered off in the wrong direction and was not able to return and go back in to see the Sistine Chapel. So that's a huge bummer. Um, now I don't know if this tour here from the museum walks you into the Sistine Chapel, so we'll have to let you know, but I assume they will do a little bit better of a job to actually get you to see probably what you're coming here to see. And then also what I said about the <laughs> line, like it is a huge line. Do not, do not try to get your tickets the day of. I mean, you're going to spend all day out in the hot sun and that thing wraps around, like don't do it. Go to the official website six days early and get your tickets and 
we're just sitting around here kind of chilling 30 minutes before, which is what you want before going into a historic monument that you've been waiting maybe your whole lifetime to visit. Meeting point C in five minutes. They look just like the metro tickets, just more beautiful. Yeah. Meeting point C mm -hmm. in five minutes? Yeah. Okay, so like 10 minutes prior, because yeah. it's like 1045. Oh, okay, yeah. Whew. I'm glad we did start coming in a little bit early because it wasn't panic. I mean, there's a lot of people here. There's different places to go, so this is the way yeah. to do it. We have our headphones, which they call the receiver. Yeah, this is good. <laughs> what ear do you want it on? I don't know. Which which is your dominant? I'm right-handed, so I have my right ear. How does this work with glasses? Oh, mm -hmm. All right. Oh, I hear his voice already. Oh, nice. The sweet, sweet sounds of our Italian guide. How's yours? It's going to be very hard to hear what you say. Mic check one two one two. But he's just talking to something. He's not talking to you. Forget about it. Can you hear us? It's one way. It should be a two way. I've got a lot of commentary about this. The Vatican Museum. Oh, this is my stack, my cup stack. Now, the Sistine Chapel is over there. You see, at the end of these two long loops. Can we take a selfie with you? Yes, for sure. It's free of charge. You don't need to bear anything. Take photos with me, eh? Usually I get money after that. Eh? <laughs> We'll just take a video. This is our you, favorite tour guide. You have, a, you have my Nono's name, so, you know. My name is Antonio, eh? Yeah. Number one guide. <laughs> the Vatican and every country that we go to we look for a patch specifically we're looking for a Vatican patch let's go see if we can find it oh don't get hit by a bus at one point I don't know if it still is but this used to be the only McDonald's that did not have a yellow logo I don't know if it's because of the yellow flag of the Vatican they don't want competition or anything too bright or shiny around here but it looks really different with no yellow on this McDonald's. Where are you in patch form? We need a patch. Which way? This way? Right. But it's technically not inside the Vatican. I think this is the Vatican. Or it's close enough. Because the Vatican immigration office is right there. So th I think this is still the Vatican. I found patches. There's a Vatican sticker. But not a patch. Are they Patches or stickers? No, these are stickers. These are stickers. But there's no Vatican patch. Hmm. 
I mean, it's kind of. Well, it says Rome, but it also it says, says Vaticano. it's the Vatican and this is the St. So, Peter's Basilica. I know, but you don't want to try and get the. It would be it, something like this would be pretty cool. Yeah, or this. We're gonna try this last one here, like right outside of St. Peter's Basilica. If we can't find it, then we'll go back and get the other one. We wanted a patch that just said Vatican on it instead of Rome Vatican, but most of the souvenirs seem to have both. We didn't have much to choose from, but when I was looking at it again, it did look really nice because you had the basilica in front of it and it does say Vatican on it, so we got a patch. For us, the best thing was how the artists of the time brought the Bible to life. For the first time, thanks to the statues by the Holy Stairs, we could visualize Pontius Pilate presenting Jesus to the crowd of angry people. We could picture Judas betraying Jesus with a kiss. We love learning the reason why Michelangelo sculpted Moses with horns. Even though photos and videos were not allowed, the paintings of the creation story on the ceilings of the Sistine Chapel will forever be in our memories. We really appreciated the ability to visit the sites of Christian significance. And we're not done in Rome yet. Thank you so much for watching this video. This is Witty Travels. What could possibly be next?